And Lord, I just thank you for this special day as, as we share and are going to dedicate at the end of the service. And Lord, just as we share a little bit this morning, just speak to us, encourage us, challenge us, transform us by your word, I pray today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. You know, I was, I was looking at the calendar and actually in two weeks we'll have been here a year. Can you believe it? Wow. It's just been, it's been, it's been great. We've really enjoyed it and just, it feels still like six months some ways and then some ways it feels like we never left. It's very confusing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of the things when we first started praying about it, like very, very beginning, I had decided like, before really anything, I, when I saw his, his older, old office there, and I was like, that's going to be a prayer room and library. Amen. So if, that's, if I have any say in it, and I do, if I am the guy, right? I'm like, if I'm going to have any say in it, that's what that's going to be. And, and so God just put it on my heart, and so I'm kind of excited that today is the day we get to dedicate it. And, and so I'm going to have Kay and Charity come up after at the end. And, but before I do, I, I want to just share seven lessons I learned from Pastor Joe. And so it's not going to be seven of his sermons. It's not going to be about David the giant killer or, or the, uh, what was, what was uh, training for raining, some of the old, you know, classic ones. I used to tease him because I would say, I've been with you eight years and I've only heard two sermon series because they were so long. So I've learned that from him. So just make those long sermon series. It's, it's good. But the, the seven lessons from Pastor Joe would be, just stuff that I picked up through just doing life with him or just stuff that he said over and over and, and just stuff that I, you know, caught more than taught, you know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of them, even some of his sayings, like, that I picked up, you know, when I say, I submit to you, that was, you know, that's Pastor Joe. That's his way of saying, hmm, I think you should think about this, and this is probably true. I'm thankful I didn't pick up parachutist. Remember that one when he was, I'm like, we were like, it's just called a skydiver. He kept saying parachutist, and we were, we were trying to convince him, but remember that? That was so funny. So the first, first one that I, I want to share with you, one of the things that he used to always say, and you're going to go, oh, yeah, is readers are leaders. Or is it leaders or readers? No, readers are leaders. Readers are leaders. And Pastor Joe had a love for the written word. Amen? Yeah. I mean, we, we saw it with all the books that he had, right? We saw, and it wasn't just like, it wasn't just like Christian books. He, he loved to read for leisure. He loved to read books that were like, like anti-Christian just for to get the other argument. So, so I had to go through and I'm, in the library, I'm like, you know, how to be a good Muslim. No, we're not going to put that in the, in the library, you know. But he would, he would have all these books for research and things like that. I had to explain to some people, no, there's a reason why we're not handing these out. And like, what? What are you doing with those? I'm like, no, it just, those were research. And, and so, but he just loved books. And 2 Timothy 4.13, and this is kind of profound because we know 2 Timothy is the last letter that Paul wrote before his death, right? And so, you know, your last words are things that are important to you. And so he had a few things. And right near the end, Timothy, uh, Paul says, when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, and also the books, and above all the parchments. So Paul literally said, near the end of his life, he's like, get my coat and my books. <laughs> right? He'd be like, I can see Pastor Joe. He's like, just get my books. Make sure you, I want my books, right? You know? And, and so just a love for that. And, and I, I'll tell you what. Like, when I, I grew up like a regular kid who didn't read a lot of books. I read a book. <laughs> and I remember it was so hard to read a book. Even like in school, I would just skim, you know, if you get the cliff notes, right? And, and so I was not a reader when I met Pastor Joe, but I definitely am a reader now. Amen. And, and, 
And so, like, he would always be buying me books. He'd be asking me what I'm reading. And I'd be like, um. <laughs> so I learned really quickly, I got to at least know the title of a book. <laughs> I got to have one that I opened. and be like, yeah, I've been reading that. Read the foreword, you know. But uh, he really, you know, just like he would always be bringing up books. Oh, I read this in a book. Or here's a book. Or this is a great sermon illustration I got from a book. Or here's a theme from a book. And, and, and even some of his, his series were just, you know, so much of it was from things that he was reading and, and receiving the impartation. And it's so important for us to be readers. To be a reader is to be a learner. And, and we can go through life and we can learn from hitting the wall, right? We can learn from experience. But man, isn't it better when we learn from someone else's? Yes. Yeah. Right? And that's why it's so important to be in the Word every day, to develop a love and a zeal for God's Word. And even, even beyond that, read, read other books. Read, read books about the Word. But now, like, I even read for leisure now. So, yeah. So, hey, how about that? Like, he definitely made me a reader. Every, like, just about every night, unless we're all sitting around talking in the living room. But if, if we're not talking, I'm reading some, just, you know, some, I like, like, science fiction and post-apocalyptic books for my leisure time. They're kind of fun and crazy. And, and, and so... But I'm reading like one of those, and man, you want to get get some sleep? Read it at night, not on like the screen on a book. And you're like, a couple chapters, I'm like, I'm out. But I uh, got that from Pastor Joe. So you wanna you wanna really have something that impacts it? Become a reader. Amen. His Word, other books, and just develop that because when we do, we learn things that we don't have to learn through personal experience. Number two. He lived to give. Acts, Acts 20, 35 says, In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. He himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And, and I got to tell you, Pastor Joe loved to give. I don't know if you got to see this side of him, but he loved to give. I remember one Christmas morning, we were doing our thing with the family, we're all in our pajamas, and I hear the doorbell ring, and I'm like, who the heck is at the door on Christmas morning? I was like, what? I'm like, the nerve. Who's bothering me? And then, I, and then there's Pastor Joe with a bunch of gifts. So if you come unannounced, just be bringing gifts. Bring a chocolate peanut butter pie, something. But I shouldn't say that because then, like, you guys know where I live. People be showing up. <laughs> but I, I never forget that. And I was like, well, I, you know, I'm pretty sure that was his love language. You could tell me, you know, the five love languages. Gift giving was definitely one of his strong ones that he loved to do. And it's going to come up a few times. I mean, one time the congregation gave us an a all-expense cruise to a Disney cruise. Remember that? I think that was... Was that our 10-year anniversary, honey? I was trying to do the math. 10-year? We're almost our 30. We're almost our 30. That was like 20, almost 20 years ago. I just can't fathom this. My brain is broke. I'm like, what? 20 years ago. And now he did kind of confess on that one. He's like, I think that was more like K. But <laughs> he was like, my wife has it in her head to give you guys a cruise for your anniversary. And so, and then he's like, so we're going to make it a part of the church thing, you know, so you don't have to flip the whole bill. But, you know, but he still, he loved to give and to bless us. And, and so it was, it was great. And I was like, cool. I'm like, you're getting no, like, you know, help over here. You know, you guys want to give us a cruise. I'm not helping you get out of it. <laughs> so we're good. But you know what? When you give stuff to people, when we give, it, it expresses value. Yes. When you give something to somebody, it's saying, hey, I care about you. It says you matter. Whether it's, it's give through serving or giving an item or doing something, it's saying you matter to me and I want to bless you. Amen? 
And I mean, Jesus did that. The Father gave his son because he expressed value to us by paying the price for us, the gift of salvation. That's the best gift ever. Hallelujah. And so we as believers are called to be givers and blessers of other people. Amen? Amen. And, and, and one thing, like, when we, like, the gifts don't make it with us, but the impartation of blessing people can make it to heaven because the only thing that goes to heaven are people and what's imparted. Amen. Amen. That joy, that act of love, that kindness that we receive that becomes a part of us that we never forget, that goes with us. Amen? Amen. And I used to, for a long time, a few years, I, I was thinking about this. Why don't I do this anymore? But I would, when I would go through the cashier line at the supermarket, I, and I, probably, I figured out why I don't do this anymore is because there's hardly any cashiers anymore. <laughs> They're all robots. And so, but when I'd go through the line, I would say, hey, can I get you a candy or something for your, because for, they got the candies in the thing. I'm like, what do you want for your lunch, for your break? You want some chips? You want this? And they'd be like, what? I'm like, no, I'm going to buy you some, some chips or something for your break. And they always would be, I love the, just the look of confusion on their face. Yeah. You know? And then I'd like buy it separately. So I'd give them a receipt, give them my card, and just so they don't get in trouble with the manager. And then just say, hey, Jesus loves you. Always attach Jesus to it because Jesus is the reason. And then it becomes a spiritual moment, not just a person being nice. It becomes a person showing the love of Jesus. And so it just could be so powerful. And you know what? Don't worry about it. Like throw that extra tip on there and put God bless you on your receipt. You're not going to die from tipping 25%. I know some people are like, well, I'm like 12%. No. Don't not give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Amen. And and I don't I don't I don't tip I don't tip based on what they deserve. I'll just tell you that right now. Amen. I tip just the way I am with Jesus by grace. That's how I tip. So maybe maybe that's gonna maybe that's a stronghold for some of you. Just praying to be broke breakthrough today in Jesus' name. All right, number three. Number three. Have fun. Well, we've been doing that today because we've just been all just having fun off the chain today. But have fun. Now, there was a quote that Pastor Joe picked up from Stephen Tavani. He says, when it stops being fun, it stops being God. I don't agree with that quote. <laughs> but <laughs> I just guess, I mean, like, you know, I mean, just get a little biblically. Think of Stephen, you know, getting stoned. That probably wasn't fun. I'm just saying, but there is a joy that surpasses understanding, and God does want us to have fun, right? He gave us joy, not just joy through trials, right? That's not the only joy that he gives us. I mean, he gives us that, but like we can actually, God created this, this planet and this place with all kinds of things to be enjoyed. 1 Timothy 6 17 says, For the rich in this present age charge them not to be haughty nor set their hopes on uncertainty of riches, riches, but on God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. That means the sunset. Enjoy that sunset. Enjoy that swim. Art. We can enjoy art. We can enjoy. Remember the temple? It was beautiful. Amen. He didn't just make it utilitarian, right? Everything he's created, like, here's the thing. We can enjoy food. Amen. Yeah. I know, amen, come on, amen, I know. We've had some of the, some of the gateway meals. Yeah, enjoy food, I know, right? And so he can, we can enjoy it. I mean, he made seasonings and taste buds, right? So there's, there's, you know, obviously we can enjoy too much food. I've been there, but, you know, but he made things for us to enjoy, we can enjoy life. And let me tell you, if, if, if you don't like having fun, then I don't know what church to recommend. I probably shouldn't recommend one, but I won't name any, but it ain't this church. Right? Amen? Because we, we enjoy life. Now, sometimes we're down and we're working hard and, and just and doing it, but we're also having fun too because I think Jesus is fun. Amen? I think following Jesus 
there's a lot of fun following Jesus. Amen? I think when somebody gets saved, that's fun. I think when we share our faith and, and it touches somebody, that's fun. I think when we laugh and we enjoy each other's company, I think God smiles on that. I think it's spiritual. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right, number, oh, 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 I got, I got one. I got an example, too. Like when we would go out and eat, yeah, see, if we go out and eat, we would always, Kay would always find these cool restaurants to go to or something like that, and we would have fun. This one, we went to this place in Myrtle Beach. Do you remember that? And it was the waiter, like, knew Bob Irvine, the guy with the TV show. Yeah, yeah, and the waiter was crazy. He was, like, one of those, like, waiters that, like, like, should be in like a themed restaurant or something like that. And he'd be cracking jokes on everybody the whole time. And like, you know, he, like, remember that? And he would like, like kind of like tease everybody. And he's like well-known and famous and stuff like that. And so we all went there and, and we just had the great time. Look at Danny laughing. See, isn't that good? I love to see people smiling. And so we had such a, you remember that, Danny? Remember that? You remember the waffles. See, Danny likes food. Danny enjoys food. And so... You know what? And I don't remember the food, really, but I remember enjoying each other's company and having fun. Amen? And so it's good. We should enjoy ourselves. Number four, investing in people. And that's kind of connected to giving. And what you'll see here is a lot of these kind of, they interconnect with each other. And anything of the Lord will always interconnect with other things. And I could show you a million scriptures for this. But like Barnabas and Saul or Paul uh, investing in Timothy and mentoring and all of these things. I remember Pastor Joe would, in, would invest in me personally. Like when he bought all those books, he would he, he'd buy me books and, and things to read. And whenever we were out, he's like, you want a book? You want to pick out some books that you want? We'll pay for them, you know? And, and we take me to convention, Foursquare Convention, and man, so many like pivotal things in my life happened at Foursquare Convention. Yeah. And so, but that was an investment, a, a, a putting in, something that costed something to someone that was put into me. And I, I'm grateful for that. And so when we invest in other people, maybe it's money, maybe it's time, maybe it's emotion. Because you, know, you all know that sometimes people, like, they suck a lot of energy out of you, yeah. Yeah. right? Well, if we give that energy... It's a gift and it's an investment. Amen? And so we're called to not be stingy in how we pour into you and give into other people's lives because it can be so transformative. And I'll tell you what, like, like I've invested in a lot of people over the years. Some of those investments have not paid off. <laughs> I'm still waiting to see that return, you know? Like that stock is like still like five cents a share, you know, and, but some of them have been really great, and sometimes, listen, it ain't over yet, like that investment can still pay off, some of them I'm going to see on this side of eternity, some of them on the other side, and I'll be like, oh, wow, really, wow, I didn't realize, it's going to be that short little investment, or that other one that you just spent so much time, and, and then later you see, wow, praise the Lord, look what he did, and so, I remember there was a, a guy, his name was Steve Angel, and this was on Fifth Avenue, and he showed up at the office one day. He was homeless. He's like, I'm homeless, I'm living in the woods, and I'm an alcoholic. And he goes, I tried to go to this place, and they wouldn't take me because I wasn't currently drunk. Wow. And he's like, I need help. I don't want to get drunk to go in to treatment. And I was like, wow. And I was brand new. Like, I'm like a month on the job. I have no idea what to do or anything. I just showed up. He's like, there's your desk. Get to work. I'm like, all right. And so I don't know what to do. So I'm like calling people and stuff. I spent the whole day, got him into a program, a place, then didn't hear from him. And then like a couple years later, my phone rings. I'm on the, at the airport going to a, probably a convention or something. And he's like, hey, this is Steve Angel. I just want to let you know I went through the program. I've been dry ever since, and I'm following the Lord. Amen. That was just a little investment into somebody. How many know, love Mr. Rogers? You love Mr. Rogers? Oh, I love. You got to watch, the, watch that movie. It is so great. Oh, my gosh. Bring tissues. Grab some from under your chair. We got a lot. And, and, and so, but man, it's so, it's so powerful. 
And Mr. Rogers was like this guy that's just super kind, super loving in public on the show, but also privately as well. I read his biography and like there's a lot of myths about him. He doesn't have tattoos. He, um, he wasn't a sharpshooter. That's all a myth. But he really was a great guy. And one of the people that he affected was this, this young uh, child that was a quadriplegic. And, and his name was um, Jeff Erlinger. And you can put that up there, the picture of him. That's the little boy right there. And so he had him on his show. And what Jeff said was, just being with Mr. Rogers made me feel so encouraged, like I really mattered and I could do something. Amen. And one of his quotes, I think, was something to the effect of, says, don't live life by what you can't do, but by what you can do. And, and, and he said, and so then Jeff became this advocate for people with disabilities. And then the other pictures right there are when, when uh, he gave Mr. Rogers his Lifetime Achievement Award. And so he came out on the stage, and, and when he was gonna, just going to introduce Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers, he didn't even wait. He just ran up on the stage and gave him a big hug, and was like, hey. And you know what? That's just a little investing into somebody's life that makes a dramatic difference. People are worth it. And sometimes we don't see it all right away. But I promise you, we will see it one day. Amen? Amen. 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 Number five from Pastor Joe is ask questions. He would ask a lot of questions. Amen. He would always send me out on something for, to meet with some person like all the time. He's like, you be me. I'm like, all right. <laughs> And then after the meeting, he would say, he would say, all right, so uh, did you find out when they did this and when this happened? I'm like, no. He's like, John, you got to ask questions. I'm like, okay. And did you ask him this? I'm like, no. And he's like, John, you got to think of all the questions to ask. So now, like, when I would go out and meet with somebody, I'm hearing Joe, Pastor Joe in my head going, well, what about this? What about that? I'm so... So then I got to that point where I could anticipate every question he would ask. I got in his mind. And so I just ask a lot of questions. But you know what? Asking questions is really good because asking questions is understanding. The questions we don't ask, we end up filling in the gaps. So if you want to know if I'm listening, I'm asking a lot of questions. If I'm asking a lot of questions, that means I'm listening because I want to understand. And there's something called, and I could do a whole sermon on this, it's called uh, active listening. And active listening is when we say, what I hear you saying is this, and then, so is that what you're saying? And that means, and then the person will give a chance to kind of say, well, no, what I'm really saying is this. And that means you're understanding, because most people just listen to respond, not to understand. And so when we become somebody who listens to understand, guess what? We understand. <laughs> but if we're just saying, okay, all right, you told the story about your dog biting you, and I, I'm ready with my story about my dog biting me. That's just, no, the person's trying to express that, oh, it really hurt when, you know, when the dog bit, and they're going through something. And so ask some questions about it, right, so we can understand. And Proverbs 25.2 says, it is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings to search them out. And so it's a good thing for us to, to, to understand and to ask questions. And so I got that. Definitely, I did not have that one before Pastor Joe and got more of it now, later. And it's still, it takes, I have to think of it, you know, ask questions, ask questions. Number six, look for it. One of the things he would always do when we went to convention, he would, he would be sitting there, and I remember sitting next to him, and he's like, the person is talking, he's like, oh, he goes, that's the reason I'm here. And he would always say to me before a convention, he would say, listen, you're going to hear a lot of things, you're going to hear a lot of sermons and stuff, but don't try to get everything. I mean, you'll get lots of different things, but look for the one special thing that God is trying to show you for the reason you're there. Keep your eye out for it. And it makes it so, it's a different thing. And I always would tell people that, 
when, when I bring people to like a meeting or convention, but I don't give him credit. I just like, it was my own thing. Like I'm the smart one. I just, just so you know. Now you know where I got it from, but I'm like, I sound very, I make it sound very wise. I'm like, listen, God's gonna, there's gonna be a lot of messages here, but I want you to just really just look for the one reason that God brought you and write that down. So I say it like that and it makes me look really wise. <laughs> Got it from Pastor Joe. But it's so true. It's so true that when we, you know, Mark 6, 7 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. When we, when we are looking for something, that's when we find it. And I have a video to show you. I will see how it shows on this giant screen. But really pay attention. L listen to the instructions that it gives you. And really pay attention. I want you, to, want you to see something here. So go ahead and play that video. This is an awareness test. <clears throat> how many times has the team in white passed the ball? passes, you are correct. But did you see the moonwalking gorilla? Is that cool? How many, how many did not see the gorilla the first time? Yay, it worked. OK, good. <laughs> I was thinking on this giant screen, everybody's going to see the gorilla. So I was like kind of glad. All right. But you know what? It's, it's so true. We don't see what we're not looking for. But we definitely see what we are looking for. And so that was kind of like that lesson that he, that he ingrained into me. So what are you looking for? You looking for a fence? You'll see it. Looking for someone? Oh, well, the pastor didn't, didn't, you know, greet me today, and I'm, or whatever, or this person didn't do this, or this. Oh, you will find it. I promise you. Looking for an opportunity to share your faith? You will find it. Looking for the good? One of the, one of the, one of the things Pastor Joe used to always say was, I choose to believe. He's like, something bad would happen, someone a little bit, he's like, well, I choose to believe they really had the right motive. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. But that's, see, what are we looking for? Even yesterday, Joanna was, went to Walmart where they, they get the groceries and put them in your trunk. Well, they weren't really good at getting all the groceries. Like, instead of dog food, they gave us hamster food. Like, not, I mean, I know our dogs are small, but they're not hamsters. <laughs> I'm so glad Charlotte's not here for that. Y'all got to say something to Charlotte. Afterwards, she always makes fun of our little dogs, so, but say something to her. But, you know, it got all messed up. She had to go back, and then three times they messed it up, and so she ended up going to Winn-Dixie to buy something, and you know what? She was like, I'm just going to look for just God in this. And she ended up inviting someone to church, and she just saw the smile on her face when she just showed her the love of Jesus. We've got to have the eyes to see. We've got to look for it. Number seven, the last one, is to honor leaders. This is something that was always important to Pastor Joe. Shonda, when she came last year and she did the installation service, remember she said, Pastor Joe sent me this beautiful bouquet of flowers and said, congratulations, we're so excited. That was something he did because he loved her and he was excited, but it was also something that he practiced regularly. I remember when we would see other supervisors, I remember Don Jackson, he'd always have like a golf shirt to give to him or something like that. He would always be given gifts to leaders. He's like, I don't want my hands to ever be empty when I see a leader because I want to honor them and to bless them. 
and he really understood. I remember he was like, most of these, he's like, we were at a meeting, and he was like, he just, you know, he would just give them this gift, and then he's like, most of these people don't understand the burden that they carry. And so whether it's a word or something, he would just, he would always want to be honoring to them. And, and so I remember that just being so powerful. First Timothy 5.17 says this, let the elders who rule be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and in teaching. So the, the word encourages in that. But more than that, watch this. Matthew 10.40 says this. It says, whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Okay? And I said, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying the new screen in the back here. It's, it's, the one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. See, when we're honoring leaders, two things. One, we're honoring Jesus, it says. And then two, it says we're connected with their reward. Yeah. We become a part of that. Just in the same way as when we're giving. When we honor them, when we honor that prophet or that leader, somehow, I think it's probably they just need the encouragement and that becomes a part of their equipping. And then because we've helped equip and encourage and do something for them, we become a part of this thing. And so God's like, oh, okay. Now uh, you've been blessing that leader. You're part of their reward. And there's a blessing released over our lives when we do that. That's powerful. That's really great. And you know what? That's why we're here today. Because it was put in my heart right away that I wanted to honor Pastor Joe by having this prayer room and library. It's the Joe Vancouvering Prayer Room and Library. I don't know what the acronym for that is. No, I'm just not going to try. You can call it whatever you want to call it. It's a room for prayer. It's a room for reading. You can borrow books. You can come in here during the week when the office is open and go in there. And it's not a memorial. There's not a picture of Pastor Joe in there. But everything, and we went through there this morning, was with Pastor Joe in mind. You know, with some of the style, with his scripture on the wall. I think we have a, a picture of it up here. And you can see the new room there, and we got the MLK uh, article there, and his verse right there, and just, of course, all the books and everything. And, and we wanted to do it to honor him. Amen. And also, amen. Yeah, you clap. <laughs> also, like, a place of learning, a place of fellowship, a place of whatever. One of the things he used to always say, too, was, when I would say, well, we can do this, this, or this, and he would say, I'm for what makes sense. Remember? He used to always say that. How many heard him say that? Like, in private, he'd be like, I'm for what makes sense. Basically, like, I don't care what you do. Just do something that makes sense. Like, do just the right decision. I'm for whatever is good. You know, I'm not, I don't got a horse in the race. I just wanted, I want it to work. And so I think this room makes sense because we can pray in there. It could be a green room. We can use it. And you know what? And that's how I felt in my heart to, to honor Pastor Joe was, was in that way.